As we have seen in the film, basic principles of somatic ODK 1500S, the somatic ODK provides support in the development of dynamic link libraries, which can be loaded directly from the user program of the S7 1500 software controller. In this film, we want to take a closer look at the development of an ODK application for the Windows environment and go through all the relevant work steps in practice. As the development environment, you have Microsoft Visual Studio available in all its standard versions. ODK offers you a C++ template for Visual Studio, which already contains all the necessary interfaces and folders and is fully functional. Thus you can begin with the definition and implementation of your task right away. But be sure to remember the installation sequence of the two software packages. If you install Visual Studio after Somatic ODK, the template will not be automatically available to you. You can remedy this situation by either executing an ODK repair installation or manually importing the template. To do so, switch to the bin directory of the ODK program folder and run ODK underline VS template underline integration dot exe file. Afterwards, the C++ template will be available to you in Visual Studio as usual. Let us now take a hands-on look at this template. To do so, we switch to Visual Studio and create a project based on our ODK 1500S template. We see that all the structures and the key directories have been created here and that in principle the template is functional. In the template, there are two important files for you that we now want to examine more closely. First, there is the ODK file. Here the basic routine characteristics of the ODK application are specified, and the interfaces and functions are defined. Here as well, at the top, above the second line, the context line, you can specify how your ODK application is to be launched. If user is selected, the application will not launch until a user is logged on to Windows. If system is selected, your ODK application will launch automatically after Windows has been booted up. The generation process using the ODK file creates an SCL file that you can then import into step 7 for further editing. The second important file is the CPP file. This is where our entire function code of the application is located. The generation process using this file creates a DLL file, which you need to copy to the ODK program data folder on the open controller in order to run it. Because the template is already fully functional, you can run a compilation process at this point so that I can show you which files are generated for the runtime system. We execute the compilation process once and then look in Windows Explorer to see where our individual files are located. Here in the project directory, in the release directory, you will find our DLL file, which we then need to copy to the Windows directory of the open controller. In the step 7 directory, we find our SCL file, which we will import into the TIA portal as an external source in the next step. We switch to the TIA portal, navigate to External Source Files, and integrate the SCL we just created as a new external module. From this external source, 
we now have the system generate function blocks for loading and unloading our ODK application or for calling up our own functions. You can now connect the newly created function blocks at will and integrate them into your program. Don't forget, however, that we cannot call up the function blocks in the OB100 because this operation module might be processed before Windows has booted up completely. To conclude this film, I would now like to show you an example of an ODK application in the Windows environment. In this example, we are generating a message box in Windows from the control program. And we can enter any random text into this message box. After the message box is sent, this text is saved in the data module of our control program. For this purpose, we can take another look at the program in the TIA portal. We see here in the program folder our automatically generated function blocks for loading and unloading and for calling up our ODK functions. And in the OB124, we have integrated all the function blocks into our program. We have already copied our executable DLL file to the open controller under the path Program Data, Siemens, Automation, ODK 1500S. Please remember that the Program Data folder is a system directory and is not visible by default. In order to launch our example, I will now establish an online connection with the S7-1500 software controller on our open controller. Afterwards, I switch to the editing mode. And here, at the top in Network 1, I see our loading module for the ODK application. I change the setting to 1 so that in principle our ODK application can be initially loaded. I control the execution of the message box here in Network 2. For this purpose I set the requirement to 1. And now on the right-hand side of the open controller we see our message box created by the controller. In the TIA portal, we switch briefly to the data module where the contents of the message box have been stored. And here we also see our standard setting. My message has been copied one to one. Now we will change the text to ODK 1500S. Confirm the message box and see if we also go to monitoring here in the data module that our newly entered text has been accepted and saved in the data module.